fresh, something new, something that I hadn't already been writing. And I think that helps love when an author can trick me, stays in the reader's mind and it leaves them wanting more. This is one thing that I've struggled with. Like I'm trying to pull my brain out through my nose. This is the start of another writing vlog. It's Saturday, which is a odd day for me to start another vlog, but we're going with it. This week, I want to attempt to get 10,000 words written. And so that means maybe 2,000 words a day for five days. Let's go. Whatever, whatever that means. But it's supposed to be almost 80 degrees today. What I want to do is it's like 930. I want to write for like two hours maybe. And then I want to go up to the pool and read for a while and enjoy the nice weather. It's supposed to be like that today and tomorrow. So that is the plan. So where I'm at, I'm just under, I'm just right around 30,000. 30, I'm not even sure what exactly I'm gonna work on. I'm just gonna like kind of see what I've written recently and pick up wherever feels right. I'll take you with me. It's gonna be a weekly vlog, writing vlog. Anytime this week that I do anything related to my work in progress, <laughs> we're gonna vlog it. So stay tuned. So it's still Saturday. <laughs> I've been writing for like 30 minutes. I think I wrote about three or 400 words. I have some music going in the background and yeah, I'm feeling pretty good today. I did wake up and I, I ran, so I was run on Saturday, do like intervals or something. And then I had breakfast, obviously I showered. And so, like I mentioned before in my other vlogs, writing vlogs, that I definitely think that this time of day is just a better time for me. Like when I feel more inspired to write or I just, I feel like I actually have more in me, I guess. <laughs> so I think that this is kind of what I'm gonna probably do for this entire week is attempt to work out shower, eat, and then write for at least two hours and then see what happens after. If I'm feeling good, I'll keep going. If not, I'll stop and do something else. Maybe read or who knows. Anyway, so this week I am, or this week, this today, I'm working on an earlier chapter in the book. I'm working on chapter like 11. Uh, it was one that I had skipped over before. So it's kind of a something fresh, something new, something that I hadn't already been writing. And I think that helps sometimes is to start a new chapter. If I'm like bored or like feeling stuck in um, what I had been working on is to just kind of switch gears and start a new chapter or go back to one that I had started before and work on it some more. So that's what I've done and it's going good. I wanted to also just kind of quickly mention that I definitely find that I'm an habitual under writer. <laughs> when I'm writing my chapters, I tend to write like the most imperative parts and skip over a lot of the 
finer details. And, you know, I think that that's okay because it's a zero draft. And so, and like I said, I am not much of a plotter. I definitely find pantsing is more my speed that I'm a discovery writer. So as I'm writing, it just kind of comes out. Like I'm, I'm not always even pre-planning exactly what's going to happen. And it just kind of happens. And I think that for me, I think some of my best ideas come from that angle. And I'm not going to stifle that if it if it's working. I'm sure that, you know, that can lead to problems later on writing yourself into a corner or having plot holes definitely be a concern for the future. But that's what's edit what editing is for. And while I don't necessarily want a huge problem to fix, if there are little ones here and there, then so be it. I, you know, I'm not just at all put off by that. So yeah, we're just gonna keep going. I just wanted to do a quick little check-in and talk about what uh, was going on. So yeah, I'll check in with you soon. Oh, so quickly off topic, but I did buy tickets to go see Zach Bryan in May. And I don't, I don't know if you guys are fans of Zach Bryan. I think he is, his voice and his lyrics are just mm, so good. Anyway, so I'm excited for that. I just wanted to share. I am reading The House on the Borderland. And I know this is a writing vlog, but reading and writing go hand in hand. And uh, it is so freaking weird. So I will definitely have a reading vlog on that. If you're interested, this is a short story that was written in 1908. And um, it is definitely strange, though I will say it was well ahead of its time for being written in 1908. Some of the ideas and the vocabulary even are, they feel so kind of current. It felt, it feels a lot like, uh, I don't know, Stephen King or Dean Koontz or something. It's that kind of weirdness, like this, his brain obviously was, went in some odd directions <laughs> and I really am enjoying it. It's about a pair of fishermen who go and they go on a fishing trip and they come across this kind of uh, rundown house and they find a journal and it is like this account of this madman and uh, his things that happen in this evil house. So go check that out if you're interested. I will. There will be a vlog of some sort, whether it's on its own or on other things that I've been reading. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for now. Getting back to it. It's Sunday and I am about to start writing. I am. I left off yesterday at 31,134 words, which is a decent day because I was just under just right around 30, so like a little over a thousand words yesterday. So today I'm shooting for, I would like to get to 33,000. And if it went as well as it went yesterday, I think it's doable. Yesterday I worked on a flashback scene and I think that's where I'm gonna pick it back up today. I did go outside by the pool and read a little bit yesterday, which was very nice, sunny, but windy. So that was the only kind of downfall Anyway, I'm just going to get to it and I'll let you know how it goes. I'm going to talk some more about that uh, later. I've been writing for about, I don't know, an hour and a half. I think I've gotten like 1300 words down, so that's good. I would like to get another 800 to a thousand today. So I am taking a break. Just gonna have some lunch, take care of laundry. Come on, Hazel. And then back to it. And then we're gonna read. I started Warm Hands of Ghosts yesterday by Katherine Arden. And uh, I'm liking it. Sunday again. <laughs> Still, again. I, it's just after two. And I, I wrote till I'm at 32,500. So just under 2,000 words today, I think. 
is going really well, but I just needed a break from the computer screen and dogs had to come out. And so we're just calling it a day. Um, I worked on some pretty fun scenes, some revelations and uh, answers. So I think that helped. It's Tuesday. I know that I didn't film very much yesterday um, as far as writing is concerned. I just didn't really have much to say. It was just one of those days where writing felt hard and I wrote when I could and did other stuff, but now I wanted to kind of talk quickly about writing endings because that's kind of where I am or where, what I've been working on is uh, the ending of my story. And so I was really thinking about that. I mean, endings are hard. Some tips that I was given in school and things that I was thinking about. Number one, to know your ending before you start writing. So if you know your ending, then you will you know, having a sense of what's going to happen to your characters, the outcome, it allows you to, it guides you better through your writing. And so this is one thing that I've struggled with because I didn't have my ending in mind necessarily when I started. I um, kind of figured it out after the fact and I do think that that may be detracted from my, my writing at first. But now that I do know, I feel like it does help me to kind of drop some narrative clues in earlier chapters and things like that. So this is definitely one recommendation that I would give to any new writers is to maybe start with your ending, to write your ending first, or at least have a pretty, gra a pretty good grasp on how it is going to end. The other thing is to really focus on building tension as you work up to your ending. So by creating suspense and making it seem like your characters might not succeed, it really makes that payoff even more at the end. Like it really packs a greater punch at the end. And then another thing is to maybe try different endings on for size. So maybe when you started, you did start with your ending or you at least had an idea, but as you're writing, maybe you cultivate new ideas for your ending, like new possibilities. You know, try to envision or to feel the emotions that each different ending might evoke. Maybe your character comes full circle, or maybe you have a surprise ending. You know, there's, I'm, and I'll, I'll talk about that as well, the different types of endings. But these are all things that are important to consider. Also leaving room for interpretation. I mean, sometimes that can be a great way to round everything up because cliffhangers are good for chapter endings. But if you're writing a standalone novel, you want to resolve the character's quest. But if you're writing a series, then it's okay to leave some room for interpretation because it also, it stays in the reader's mind and it leaves them wanting more. I think that's uh, an important tip for any of those who, who want to write a series instead of a standalone. Also, you wanna make sure that the ending makes sense. <laughs> it's a logical progression of the character's actions the progression within the plot. So, you know, if your readers are invested in the story, then they are going to want the satisfaction of your character um, arriving at the ending, like from their own choices and agency, and it will make it more valuable to the reader. You also want to make sure that you are like using all of these things that you've worked so hard to create to evoke emotion, whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending or both. You want your reader to feel something. I don't know about you, but when I'm reading a book, that is the number one probably thing that I will rate a book on is, did I care? 
Did I care about the characters? Did I care about what was happening? Did I have feelings or did I just read it like a textbook? <laughs> like all those things, they matter. Feelings and engagement with your audience are like of the utmost importance. And ultimately you want to resolve your storyline. So having that sense of closure is, is going to be super important to your reader. Now, like I said, you can leave some things left to interpretation, of course, but you still want to resolve the main plot and subplots. You Basically you want to leave your protagonist. You want your reader to be satisfied with where your protagonist ends up at the end of that book. And even if their tale is going to continue, that main plot is going to be resolved. That leads me back to the different types of endings. You have like your resolved ending, your unresolved ending, an ambiguous ending, an unexpected ending, a tied ending, an expanded ending. The resolved ending. Basically wrap everything up and you put a bow on it. Everything is resolved. All the questions have been answered. All loose threads, plot points have been resolved and answered. Everything is clearly presented to the reader with no lingering questions. Then you have your unresolved ending. And this will kind of leave the reader with more questions not necessarily from the main plot, but maybe something else happens towards the end that raises more questions. It ideally will leave your reader wanting more and it lets them reflect on all the things that your, your protagonist has been through. Then your ambiguous ending, it leaves your reader saying, well, what if? And you know, it allows them to speculate about the future. You know, maybe you want your reader to kind of reflect on the meaning in your book. Then this is a good, a good ending for you. Then with your unexpected ending, this is where you, you throw in a plot twist at the last possible moment. So your readers will believe that, the, that one ending is coming. They will have that in their mind. And then, and then you throw in something unexpected and totally throw them off. I find these endings really fun to read and I love when an author can trick me into thinking I know what's going to happen, but something completely different happens. I usually rate those books pretty high because <laughs> I do feel like it is pretty hard to surprise your readers. These are definitely like the bread and butter for mystery writers. You, that is the point. You know, you want to leave little red herrings and breadcrumbs to lead your reader astray. And then when the ending comes, something way out of left field happens and, and shocks them. <laughs> okay, so then you have your tied ending. Basically, it's like your metaphorical return home. It's like that cyclical ending where, like in the hero's journey, where the story ends where it begins, though the character's arc has come, has done a 180. So those often I think uh, are in like fantasy books, you know, the hero's journey. And then you have your expanded ending, which basically just means that you're offering your audience the epilogue. It describes what has happened in the world of your story afterward that, you know, it, it hints at the fates of the characters at some point in the future. So anyway, the entire point of this is that I am trying to figure out how do I want this to be a standalone or do I want my story to possibly be a series? Because like I've mentioned before, like I've already had an idea of another story that I had started in school that I feel like would be a an ideal prequel to this book. So my main character, Alice, her and her sister, are leading these very separate lives. You know, Earth has kind of reached its point where things aren't good. And so Alice is the one, she's out trying to find a new place for humans. And Amara is back on Earth, suffering and trying to live a life. And uh, anyway, the idea for the prequel is a story that I had written, which is similar. It takes place in Texas, but it's kind of like a dystopian 
setting where some catastrophic things have happened and there's a family that they live on a farm and they are trying to survive and there are some supernatural elements to it which while the book that I'm reading now is more science fiction I do feel like they could tie in together because I actually I would maybe even classify my work in progress as a science fantasy because it's a little bit of both. These are the things that I've been thinking about and I, while I have my act three climax in works, I've been writing it now, I've been working on it. I need to figure out the, the falling action piece in act three where things are wrapping up. Like I need to figure out that. So I left off yesterday. I am at almost 34,000 words. I would like to get 2,000 words today. <laughs> like I've been saying every day. And it actually hasn't happened. <laughs> but that's okay. We're still going with it. We're still moving in the right direction. So anyway, I am going to go feed my face and take the doggies out and then... Uh, come back and we're gonna write so stay tuned so I just added these lights to my bookshelf and I think they are fun they change color Yeah, I don't know. I think I kind of like the green. It's not very bright. Maybe the blue. The purple is nice. I don't know. Anyway, I just thought they were fun. I'm trying to figure out my where I'm filming, like the best spot. And it's still a work in progress, though I kind of like that. Actually, maybe we'll just alternate. I wish that the the wallpaper in here wasn't yellow, <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Pretty cool. Happy Wednesday. It, it's super windy here today, so I'm sorry if the audio is screwed up because I don't have a mic. <laughs> I just wanted to do a quick update on writing. So today I ended up, I wrote about 1500 words, which is pretty good. And yesterday I really didn't write much at all. Sadly, unfortunately, uh, it was just one of those days where I had other stuff to do, number one. And number two, I, when I did try to write, it just uh, felt like trying to pull my brain through my nose. <laughs> you know, I just uh, called it a day. And so I think right now I'm at almost 35,000 words, which is not where I wanted to be, but I still have at least one really good day to dedicate to writing and at least probably two half days. So I could maybe still get close to 40,000. We'll see. I was working on my, you know, the ending again. And so making progress on that, I'm happy with it. I had kind of a, mm, like a, like an idea um, about how I wanted to turn things, uh, which direction I wanted to go. And so I've started to implement that and I'm happy with that idea. It's funny to me how the ideas change as, or the story takes shape kind of as, as you're writing, at least for me, like I said, I'm a very much a discovery writer. So like I can just feel the story changing as I move along. And I think it's, uh, it's really fun. It's like having a baby and watching it grow up. <laughs> I know that's weird, but I mean, they are kind of like your babies. I was curious about if you're a writer, which I assume at least some of you are, how you feel about writing endings. Is it your favorite part or your least favorite part? And do you have any tools or processes that you use to like navigate yourself through writing that satisfying ending? Because I feel like endings are like probably the most important part of your story, right? I mean, well, that in the beginnings. You wanna hook those readers. 
but anyway yeah so just i would like to know how you handle and work on your endings i'm all ears for some pointers <laughs> and no, i do think mine's moving in the right direction and i'm not unhappy with it i just you know i just want to make sure i'm not leaving any cards on the table anyway that's it for now i'm gonna check back in later or tomorrow after i've written some more and we'll see how how it goes it's friday y'all i didn't vlog yesterday i didn't write yesterday and i hate to admit it but i feel like i i feel like i failed my writing goals this week uh, i wanted to get to forty thousand. And I don't think that's gonna happen. I am right now, oh, okay. So right now I am just over 35,000. And I, it's one of those days where I am just, I am just on a struggle bus. I, I think I wrote about 500 words in my work in progress. And I don't know, I don't understand like why some days it just feels like it pours out of me and other days it's like not happening. So anyway, I decided to just randomly open one of my other projects. I have many. <laughs> and that, partially that's because of the workshops in school. I mean, you know, we were always starting new projects based on the workshop or, you know, just whatever. So. And then obviously like just me myself, like just finding my rhythm and starting new things and then being like, meh, this isn't what I, and moving on. Anyway, I have like a whole file full of starting, starting ones. So I just pulled one open randomly and I read through it. It's only like two pages, it's like 900 words. So it's like not much at all, but I've been reading through it and writing a little here and there in that just for a little bit of a change of pace, I think. Maybe just to get their creative juices flowing. It's only, it's like two o'clock, almost two o'clock. So I, I probably stay in here for another hour, another hour. I'll probably pull my work in progress back open and, and try to make some more headway. But, and I think another thing too, like all week I've had, just serious eye strain. So like it just staring at the screen, I just have this like tension in like, oh, but, like right here behind my eyes. That's why I have my glasses on. These are just readers. They're like 0.5 magnification and they're blue light blockers. And I will wear these sometimes at night. I have another pair out there like for reading, cause you know, at the end of the day, sometimes my eyes are tired. Anyway, what else? I didn't go to the cafe. I worked out this morning and was starving. So I ate and then I didn't want to waste time driving to the cafe and doing all that. I just wanted to write. Uh, I don't know. I almost wish I would have gone. Maybe I would have felt a little more inspired. Anyway, that's where I am. Tomorrow I will wake up in the morning and run and then I am going out for lunch. So maybe before I leave for lunch or when I come back from lunch, I will get some more writing done. If I do, I will update you, but that will probably be the end of the vlog uh, tomorrow because it'll be a week and this is a weekly writing vlog. How's your writing going? I know that I am not the only person that struggles through these moods of feeling uninspired. And like I so eloquently put it earlier in this vlog, like I'm trying to pull my brain out through my nose cause that is how it feels sometimes. It's like, I know it's in there. I just can't grasp it. Oh, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna get back to it. But I just wanted to drop in and just update and that's it, I think. I could also mention that now that I've done my, finished my degree, I had applied for the MFA program and I was accepted. Though I don't know that I'm going to do it. I have until May to decide 
otherwise I would have to resubmit you know you have to submit your like a personal statement and a sample of your writing and they look at your grades and your whatever and then they they choose and you get accepted or not so I was accepted and that was back in like I don't know in the in the fall I think and I was supposed to start in May but I decided not to and then they said that like you know you have one year with from when you get your acceptance to begin otherwise you have to reapply so that gives me until May because May is when I would have to sign up for July classes and uh, honestly I feel like I don't know I feel like it would be beneficial for sure but I just don't know that I want to commit that time to that I think what I'm leaning towards right now is once I get my uh, conferral and all um, transcripts are updated, I'm going to apply for the editing certificate program at the University University of Chicago. I honestly think that that will be more beneficial to me at this point because there are like different paths that you can choose to focus on. Like I think I've mentioned this before, but like there's developmental editing, copy editing, different options, different focuses that you can choose that go along with kind of the base courses. I think it's only eight courses and they're each like eight weeks long. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think that that will benefit me right now. <sighs> Sorry. Especially because I would really like to, like, in addition to my own personal writing, would like to do more work as an editor and be able to offer those services with even more skills under my belt. So, anyway, that's the plan. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to get back in the groove and, and, uh, hope for the best. <laughs> Detroit-ish. <laughs> that was her saying ish, not me. I'm not geographic, you can last like that. All right, here we go. Incline two.